<laughs> Hi. Okay. Everybody, welcome to the fajita cooking class. It is um, our third in a series, and we're going to be making sheep pan fajita, chicken fajitas, which is super awesome, super quick. You can also do this in the crock pot or slow cooker, an Instapot. Other options are for different options, but we're going to use the stove tonight, and we're going to do that. Plus, if we have the stove on, we might as well make something else in the stove, and that's gonna be sweet potato fries. So I'm gonna show you how to make those as well. So we're gonna get a lot of chopping, prepping, things ready to go. I'm gonna walk you through the recipes, and at the end, we're gonna have a no-cook um, bean salad using the fajita mix as well. So I have the recipes, I'll be looking at it. You guys just follow ahead and um, just carry on as I'm going. So the first steps, always preheat your oven. So we're gonna turn that oven on, we're gonna press bake, and we're gonna put it on to 400 degrees. So you're gonna start off preheating it, okay? And then you're gonna get a bowl and we're gonna actually mix up the fajita seasoning and um, some oil. So any oil you want, um, canola oil cooks at a higher temp or has a higher smoke point so you can get away with more heat. That would be probably more for a stir fry. So you can still do canola, corn, vegetable oil, but if you wanna use olive oil, you go right ahead as well. That's okay in the oven. So let's go pull up my fajita mix because I always have my fajita mix here. So we got this fajita, we're doing that and I'm gonna pull out one of those bowls. You guys know that I love my um, four cup prep bowls. I like this because you can also, um, you can also have that lid so no saran wrap needed. So we're gonna do three tablespoons of fajita seasoning, okay? Three tablespoons, you're gonna take your tablespoon, this is a tablespoon, teaspoon, and you guys know the rest. There's ha a half a teaspoon and a quarter of a teaspoon. So you're gonna actually do three tablespoons, okay? We're gonna do three tablespoons. I find that a lot, so if you're feeling like, I really don't want that much seasoning, so you're gonna do three tablespoons, and this is going to make eight servings. So if you have left, less chicken, less vegetables, and you just wanna do four, obviously split that in half, one to two tablespoons. I'm gonna do two because I have hardly any chicken tonight. Um, little incident with freezer. So I'm gonna put that back on. And what you're gonna do is you're also gonna do two tablespoons of oil. I'm gonna grab um, olive oil. I think adding with savory is super cool. So I'm gonna add my olive oil. You're gonna take that measuring spoon again. We're gonna do two tablespoons, okay? So as you can see, you're gonna fill that up one, the oil, you can stay the same because it's going to have to coat everything and it's really not going to really affect the product. So that's fine. So what you're going to do is you're just going to stir that first and get that all together because really it's kind of going to make a coating, a flavorful coating for all the stuff that's going to go in. You're going to set that aside for right now. So just get that stirred up a little bit. Don't go crazy. No biggie. I'm just going to move my stuff back there. And then it says, and, oh, by the way, if you want to put salt and pepper in, you go right ahead. I find that putting the salt and pepper at the end after you've served it to your dish is way better because then you can actually really, really control your sodium intake. So if you want, you go ahead that now, but I don't until the end. So just so you know. Um, and then we're going to have um, chopped chicken. We're going to do peppers and onions. So what I do is for food safety, I actually do all my vegetables first if I'm using the same cutting board. If you have different cutting boards for vegetables versus meat for cross-contamination, awesome. But I kind of assume that sometimes people don't have as much as I do in the kitchen. Maybe you do, great. Maybe you like dishes, great. I don't, so I do it this way. That way there's no cross-contamination. So I'm gonna show you this as well. And we're gonna do the sweet potatoes probably afterwards, but I at home would have just probably done the prep of the sweet potatoes while I'm doing all the vegetables. So grab those knives. We're going to chop up. Okay, so I have knives. Just another little tip. There's little divots. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see those little divots? That's a Santoku knife. Those are really great knives. So you can see that chef knife, very flat major and it's got the tang that goes right down that center that is how you know it's a good knife that knife blade goes all the way into the handle so that actually gives you more control um that's doesn't have to be a more expensive knife but what i find is very cheap knives don't have that and what ends up happening is that's a way that eventually it kind of bends or works and that's why you really do like that if you can see that steel go all the way through your handle 
you're doing really good. And this is literally an Epicure one, but I have PC knives as well that do the exact same. So if you can see that, you're getting that one long because really what you wanted to do is have an extension of the hand. Ever seen Terminator 2? You know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna grab those, but we also can use cool stuff of our prep chef knife. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make these into strips and make sure no uninvited guests come onto the table. So I actually kind of go from the top, okay? You can use this as a handle if you feel like you're like, eh, and I kind of angle it out so you can actually see those seeds. So once I see those seeds, I kind of just carve around it and make sure I'm not hitting them. That makes it really easy, okay? Really easy, it's gonna be hard to do this backwards, but I kind of just try to get as much as I can out of it. If you have a different way, I'd love to see it. You can jump on my group or message me. I'd love to see it, but I really don't like getting those seeds out of the way. Like I really don't like getting them. So I try to make sure that I kind of don't touch the seeds and you can even grab it, peel off. That goes in the compost or you can dry these out and grow your own peppers. So once we have that, oh, and by the way, there's another reason why I picked orange and green. I picked orange, green, or yellow, you can choose. If you pick red with a fajita, it's already red. So it has that red like color. So I actually, we always talk about um, eating with your eyes first. So if we already have a red color, I like eating the rainbow. And that's obviously also a health thing. So if we're gonna have red, you sometimes don't see the red anyways. If you like the red peppers, you go right ahead. I just do it to make it all colorful and a little bit more of a rainbow. So I'm just gonna slide right down. And these are great. This is a serrated knife. Don't use a bread knife if you can help it, but you're gonna actually have those as just strips. And I just actually kind of put my knife down, put it on the bottom, like below, like the, the pepper itself, then I slide it on through and you can use it like that. If you have the serrated knife where you need to kind of saw through things, that's a great idea as well. We're gonna use it for chicken as well. I kind of try to, you know, use the little bottom parts, I call it the bum. But if you want, you can always chop these up into little kind of um, chunks, put them in the freezer, great for omelets, scrambled eggs, chilies, anything else. So I just try to get those strips. If you already prep these, that's great because then you can actually always just get these from like a vegetable tray if you don't want to do the prep work um, and just save these for stir fries and the sheet pans and fajitas. So we're going to slide that down. We've got a lot going. So you're going to have a lot. Now here's another awesome thing that's going on. So you're probably like, where am I going to put all this stuff? We're going to put it right on the sheet pan, which is super cool um, after we toss it. But um, I'm just gonna show you these cool little things. So this is a big baking sheet. We have our silicone liners and they actually have a lip. So anything won't get underneath. If you don't have that, that's fine. We're just gonna use a baking sheet. You just have to have a little, you're just gonna have a little bit more cleanup at the end. No problem, you're used to it. I like these silicone things because I pull them out, pour whatever I don't need as long as it's like available to go down the sink. And then I actually put these in the dishwasher. Easy peasy, no foil, no parchment. I just use these now. Super, super reusable. So um, this is what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to grab this and you're supposed to toss them all on the sheet pan with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw it on. Just so you know, I'm gonna throw it on, just throw it on right now. And then we're gonna deal with it afterwards. Unless you have a massive bowl that you put the fajita in, that's a-okay. So I'm gonna do the same with that green pepper, do that because we have two um, stir fries and fajitas. When you're doing a lot of vegetables, you probably feel like this is a lot of prep work, but if you want to do this and you do it, you can always use these ones that are frozen. So if you've ever seen this before where you just wanna prep those and throw them in a freezer bag, A-okay if you have stuff. So of course that's gonna go in compost and now I've got my peppers again. You guys are probably doing it a little bit quicker than I am right now because I stopped to talk and explain things. But now this is going to go just, you know, sprinkle it and mix it into your other peppers. Okay, so you want to have that dispersed. If you can and you have a very large bowl, you can throw that right into your bowl with your fajita mix. If not, A OK as well. So I'm just looking for those strips. It doesn't have to be super pretty, but this is what kind of like that sizzling skillet. You're gonna have a sizzling skillet without having to go to a restaurant anymore. And you're not gonna be working over a stove. You're just gonna be doing prep work, grabbing the vegetable tray, whatever you want, and sprinkle, 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 okay? So I'm just gonna save these for later. And that way I really don't like wasting anything. So then you have that. So we've got our peppers. We're gonna do our onion. I have a red onion. Use whatever you want. 
it's true. You can actually use this white cooking. That's a okay. But if you have green onions, that's a okay too. It's a lot for the flavor, but the red onions, it's going to give, I think it's like more like a purple as much as they say it's a red onion, purple onions color. So what I do is don't cry on me. If you don't cry. There are onion goggles out there. I do not use them. I cannot guarantee that I'm not going to cry tonight, but what I do is I take the top off. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to have it into like big slices. So I take that top off before I peel it. This is what I do. And just honestly, there's no right or wrong unless you're Chef Ramsay and then he's going to call you a donkey anyways. I will never call you a donkey. Don't call yourself a donkey. Um, we're home cooking and we're enjoying it. We're kind of more like uh, that Curtis dude, the naked chef. You know what I'm talking about? So what I do is I cut the top and the bottom off and then I peel the rest. Here's things. Keep it away from your face. No joke, if you can, because really it's actually um, the stuff coming off of it that's actually vapors that get into your eyes. You're gonna, if you don't wanna cry, I don't normally do this, but if you don't wanna cry, you're gonna rinse this under the tap, okay? Rinse it under cold water just for a couple seconds. Rinse, 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 under cold water. If it's warm, don't worry, but I just do under cold water. And if you want, you can change your, your, your cutting mat as well to reduce the amount of crying that you do while you're cooking. So I don't know if you love crying or you love, not love crying, love cooking or hate cooking, but that's super another tip. You can also rinse off your knives. The less that that, that juice is on there is the less that you're gonna cry, just saying. And the older the onion or the drier the onion, the less you'll cry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually chop it in half. Now we have a very flat surface. Awesome, I can already, feel that coming up and I'm like I'm going to keep it away as much as possible and then I'm going to take that and I'm going to slice it slice this is where you might want that serrated blade if not chop as best as you can and keep your obviously your fingers away but having that serrated knife is also great so I find this is a lot of onions so what I'm going to do is only use half and I'm just going to pull this over here so you guys can see it okay and I'm gonna just, they'll end up breaking apart. So you're gonna sprinkle, sprinkle that purple and white, beautiful colors, and just get that going. So you're gonna have skills. If you want, and you're not a big fan of onions, I suggest, ooh, I can feel a little tear coming. You can actually cut these in half as well. So I'm just gonna show you, but you don't have to have as many onions. You don't want to, okay? So super duper awesome right there. There's more here, but what happens if you have, you're just like, eh, I actually would, Suggest, oh, now I gotta wash my hands. These darn cats love my cooking classes and it doesn't matter how many treats I give them, they just want to be, I swear, they want to be loved. So we're gonna go back to cooking because these cats are going to um, seriously be the death of me. Okay, so I actually cut them in half and then you have actually little less to deal with because I don't like having big chunks. Um, hopefully you guys aren't crying yet and I haven't made you cry in the kitchen because who wants crying in the kitchen? It's supposed to be dancing. And if you catch me on any other day, you usually have music. I'm seriously about to cry right now. I'm gonna save this other half of the onion for the third recipe. So just, we're gonna put that here. I'm gonna actually put it on top of my corn and keep that going. And then we're gonna throw that here. Perfect. And don't forget the tops of your onions can go in the compost as well. I highly suggest, and I'm gonna be, I constantly rinse my hands every time I go back. That was awesome. Okay, so <laughs> we've got that going on and now you're just gonna take your chicken and chop it. So I have a couple pieces here and I know they're kind of pieces. So you're gonna put, do them in slices about double the thickness of your peppers, but kind of skillet size. So if you've ever had a skillet, these are actually chunks. If you wanna do chunks, you go right ahead. Actually, I'll just do this this way so you guys can see that I'm actually, so go chop your chicken into strips. Um, kind of like chicken strips. If you have the chicken fillets, perfect. You just throw the chicken fillets right on, okay? So you don't even need to chop the chicken fillets if you wanna get the chicken fillets, okay? So we're gonna actually put those chicken pieces. These are the fillets, so I have a little bit of everything right now. And what you're gonna do, you can do this with frozen chicken. It's just gonna take a little bit longer to cook. So that's gonna go in the garbaggio. And that was raw chicken. Then Sandra is gonna wash her hands with soap yet again. Oh, hopefully you guys are 
ready to go. And so if you have the bowl, you could have put this all in the bowl and we still can, if you really wanted to, you can actually just pull this up and actually pour it into the bowl. I just find, I like actually just kind of getting that coating going, stir it up again. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that spoon and you're gonna drizzle it, especially try to hit that chicken to get a little bit more of the flavor of the chicken. You're gonna drizzle it over top instead of coating in the bowl. So if you wanna do the bowl method, you go right ahead. I just like kind of drizzling it and making sure I hit all that chicken too. And then that way I'm not wearing it because I wear it. But if you wanna do it, you can actually just put it back in the bowl and then I'm just gonna pour. If you feel like it's gonna stick to your pan, I don't have that issue because I have the silicone. You go right ahead, add more oil. And so what I would do is I'd add it to the bowl. So I'm just a person that I love a lot of sauce. I'm a saucy person. So I'm just gonna actually add it to the bowl. So then we're gonna get more of that fajita back in there, right? And we're gonna get all those flavors instead of just adding it to the pan. I'm gonna make sure it comes, all that comes out of there. And we're gonna grab all those spices because man, those are some good spices. And that don't forget, that was only two tablespoons. So it's really good to coat it, but I do find that I like a little bit more oil, like a little bit more distribution of that. And then what you can do is if you really want, you can actually just stir it on the pan. No joke, I'm not kidding. Like, this is not like, ooh, that's kind of weird and Sandra's lazy. Like the whole point is just kind of move it around and make sure you have your chicken kind of spaced out in between the vegetables as well. So you don't want to have all the chicken on one side. You're going to actually have chicken peas and then you're going to have some vegetables and then you're going to have some other chicken pieces. And if you have small pieces, you can put them on the, in the middle and then big pieces are on the end because they'll probably get kind of more. I've got this big chunk right here. So just kind of make sure that the chicken's dispersed as well and the peppers and it's kind of evenly kind of laying out on that pan. Okay. So we've got that going on. I probably have still more oil here, which is awesome. Don't think I'm gonna see the end of that, but okay. So here we go. We've got that going on and then it's only supposed to be uh, 20 to 25 minutes. So that's not frozen chicken. I have frozen chicken, but hopefully because they're small pieces, we're gonna put that in. So if you're ready to go, we're gonna put that into the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And actually I'm going to put that uh yeah i'm gonna put that on the top and if you want you go ahead put that convection bu button on and then it'll actually get it going my convection oven works really well so i'm not going to because we're on to the second part which is guess what sweet potatoes so hey google set a timer for 20 minutes 20 minutes starting now there we go hopefully that set your google for you if not, you probably have Alexa. Okay, so on to the second recipe. We've got fajitas that are sweet potato fries, okay? So it's super cool. It really goes well with um, the roasted garlic aioli. You're gonna take these really big, big, big uh, potatoes and you're gonna wash them and scrub them. Okay, so we're gonna wash them, scrub them. They are a root vegetable. So let's get those scrubbed up really good. I like picking, we can. And this is where it gets kind of crazy. So this one is good, but if you do have a chef knife, I highly suggest doing that. I like cutting off the ends, okay? You're gonna chop it. There's not really sawing to sweet potatoes. I'm gonna chop that off. Don't forget, I like composting. You're gonna chop the ends off because I just find they're very, if you, kind of like that's where their roots are. So if you have any like little things or you have little eyes, pull them off. Make sure the eyes are off and get that root going. Okay, so this is actually, it's supposed to be preheating the oven to 425 if you're doing this on your own. We're gonna leave it at 400, it's okay. And then we can always crank it up later. So we're also gonna use sheet pans or whatever else. If you have this, this is what I'm gonna use. We have our mini ones. So these actually equal two. And then what I've done is I put the liner so you don't have to. And then we actually put like a little, cooling tray on top, and then that way it circulates the heat. If you don't have the cooling tray, that's A-OK, -okay, A-OK, -okay, and it still works just on a pan, okay? This just makes it a little bit more crisp and kind of circulates a little bit more. 
Trust me, I've done this a lot. Okay, so we're just going to, if you do have cooling racks and you wanna do this, and they're heat safe, obviously, then you're supposed to, okay, um, kind of tickle this with some oil to make sure that it doesn't stick. So you're just gonna take some of that olive oil into a bowl. You're gonna take a baster if you want, okay? And you're just gonna actually coat the tops, okay? If you want to make sure it doesn't stick. If you have a spray, a spray oil, you can go use it that way. If you don't have this, I'm just doing this extra step because I have these. Do, 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 do. And I'm gonna do this one too. And that way you can see. But don't worry, I have done these. Usually I don't use the cooling tray as much because I am just lazy and I don't want dishes and they turn out fabulous anyways. So there we go. We've got that going on. Let's close this just in case I spill it. And then I'm just gonna put this here for one. Second. So we're going back to our sweet potatoes, right? So we got those and it says cook unpeeled potatoes lengthwise. So we're gonna actually scrub them and we're going to cut them lengthwise. So these are massive. So imagine a French fry, okay? Do it as the size that you want, but I kind of cut them right in the middle and I smack seriously down and you're gonna use all that weight. And the reason why we have those big blades is for big food. The smaller the food, the smaller the knife you can get away with, unless it's a paring knife and you're perfectly peeling and everything else, then you want control. But with big things like that, you don't want like this little, you don't want this trying to get through this baby. As you can see, there's a, there's a lot to get through. So you're gonna want a bigger knife, okay? So let's pretend we only have one. And what I do is I do this. No joke, because I like having control. I have cut myself many two a times. And so I actually use that flat surface to guide and then it's completely stable. Then I put this hand above and I get it in the middle and I kind of just wiggle my way down to get that flat. That is how I do it. Maybe you do it somewhere else. It's preheated, but we've already thrown it in. So you can see the timing here it really works well. And then I've got another flat piece, right? So don't forget that's weight. So we've got more stability, the flatter it is, then we actually, that's how I end up doing it. And I actually then I'll go across and I'll cut from like kind of like left to right or right to left. And I kind of cut them, don't worry. I know you're probably thinking, Sandra, that doesn't look like a fry yet. We're gonna kind of matchy match, try to get them as even as possible when you're going down this way. And you're like, but Sandra, I have this wide, wide, <laughs> thing, right? You have these wide things, then you're going to turn them flat and then you're going to cut them again into a fry. Okay. So you're going to have big fries. If you want, you're going to have little fries. The bigger they are, the longer it takes to cook. Okay. So what I do is I kind of do them in long strips using that flat edge, right? To really guide it. And if you want, you can actually just make them even thinner. If you have a fry cutter, you go right ahead. I just kind of use the flat edges as much as possible. Okay, there we go. Do the same with this one. These are massive the potatoes, right? And so this is kind of a weird one. So I'm gonna, for safety's sake, do that because I don't trust that I was gonna be able to do the little hat on Santa's, Santa's hat, like the little cap. So I'm gonna do that that way. Then I have these, right? Fruit throw those down and I go left to right, however you wanna do it, make them into fries. If you wanna make them into um, kind of more like hash browns, you go right ahead and that cooks even quicker. So if you wanna make them in chunks, I've done that too. So um, this works really well. Do this, I'm just gonna chop through everything and get that done. I'm gonna flip all those one more time and then I'm actually going to have that. Um, you're probably thinking, okay, Sandra, what are we doing with these? We're going to actually steam them. So we're going to microwave. So you're going to get your a microwave ready bowl. I have a steamer, so it's even better, but you're going to have a bowl. And if you can put either a plate on top of it, and this is what they're going to go into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our steamer. Okay. Even if you have the small steamers, you go right ahead and use them. Okay. I'm going to take that tray out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be throwing these in there. No joke. So if you don't have this, all you're gonna do is take a casserole dish, a microwave bowl, whatever you have, and make sure it's covered. And we're gonna put a tiny bit of water because I find that these sweet potatoes and any sweet potatoes in the stores are not super juicy. So as much as you usually don't need, um, need water in the steamer, especially like broccoli and stuff, I just find that sweet potatoes are a little bit thicker 
and I really like adding a little bit of water to make sure they steam really good. Okay, so as you can see, it does add up sweet potatoes. You can do this with squash. Um, uh, what else? Butternut squash, I've done this with. Turnip, um, so you can do the same thing with these ideas. Um, parsnips is really good instead of sweet potato fries. If you've ever had parsnip fries, super good. Um, and you can do it the sheet pan style as well. So instead of like with the chicken, the, the chicken and the peppers are really good pairing for cooking times, but the sweet potatoes to cut down on cooking. And even these are just regular potatoes if you wanted to do them to cut down on cooking, microwave them first. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just chop these up. I feel like I had a really big sweet potato. So this is gonna make, so I'm gonna actually just stop at that because this was massive. They were massive. And I'm just gonna throw about one to two tablespoons of water in here. Just splash it in with your sink. That's it. And what we're gonna do is once you're done chopping, I'm gonna put that, just so you know, if anybody has a steamer, these are the, the handles, if you can see there, you're gonna have your vents going away from your hand so that when you grab it, it's not gonna be shooting out right at your hand. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water in, put a little bit of water in your casserole dish, right? You're gonna open up, look at, I store all of my microwave stuff in there. And then I'm gonna put that on there and we're gonna actually microwave it for four minutes. If you want, keep on going with your sweet potatoes. If you're done, you're like, yeah, that's enough sweet potatoes for me because we do have a lot of food going on tonight, then that's a-okay. We have the peppers, we have um, the onions, we have sweet potatoes, we've got some chicken, we've got some protein in there, we've got some spices, obviously fajita. And then we also have you know, a protein with all the beans as well. And that's a great salad to have this summer to kick it up, have it a little sweet, but at the same time, awesome. So I'll be doing this later because waste not, want not. And I'm gonna put that in cover. We're gonna microwave that. And that's gonna be about, I think it says three to four minutes until a knife can pierce the flesh. So it's just like, just making sure that we can actually get it through. It's not gonna be super soft or super mushy, okay? So three to four minutes, and then we're gonna just drizzle it and sprinkle it with fajita. That's it. So if you want, you're gonna get out your pans while that's going on, right? So we've done all the cooking, cutting. We're just gonna put that there for now. I think we're pretty much done for the cutting. Is that crazy? We've already got food going in. This is if you wanna heat up your tortillas, you go right ahead. There's another step that I'm gonna do because we still have 10 minutes going on and the sweet potatoes are gonna take a little bit. So if you wanted, I would highly suggest prepping the sweet potatoes at the same time as the vegetables and shoving it all in at the same time. But you're gonna see, we might have another five minutes to add into it anyways. And that's about 15 minutes, which is about roughly the same time as the 18 minutes required for the sweet potatoes in the oven. You can do anything in there, but obviously this is gonna make it a little bit crispier and awesome. So if you wanted to do squash, sweet potatoes, potatoes, it all works in a microwave. Whether you have the steamer or not, you put it in a casserole dish. It usually just takes a little bit longer than the steamer. So waiting for that, we still got two minutes to go. And then, you know what? If you do have, oh, and of course I opened up the crushed tomatoes not the chopped tomatoes. So let's get at those chopped tomatoes. I'll get them out too. I hope I picked the chopped, oh, I did. Chopped or diced, okay. So this is not so fun on my wrist. If you want, let's open those up now. You're gonna open up all the cans of beans if you can, because we might as well do something while everything else is cooking, or if you want, and I wasn't around, you can grab your phone, Make a list of whatever else you need to do because I know you're super busy. Sit back, relax, grab a drink, cocktail, whatever it is. Go to the bathroom, whatever you need to do. You have lots of time in between when it comes to these things. It's kind of like the set it and forget it, but super easy. The sheet pans are like a thing that a lot of the consultants now do because guess what? Super easy, super quick, and then you don't have to you know, slave over a stove. So we're gonna get those diced tomatoes out. And I'm going to show you. Okay, so that's going to be for our fajitas. So all you're going to do is you're going to take that, those diced tomatoes. I didn't wear it. Just going to put diced tomatoes. If you have fresh tomatoes, you go nuts. You chop those tomatoes and you just chop them. Okay. And then we're going to take, hopefully it's here, because I'm always ending up 
grabbing it and bring it to somebody else's house and leaving it there when they love it. So you're gonna take your poco picante. Please say, I don't have to run downstairs to get it. I bought tons. Oh, there we go, I found it. Found it. And as we know, you still got like 10 seconds. All you're gonna do is chopped tomatoes, poco picante, two tablespoons, and I found out a lid today, if you checked out my, my page, actually it's two tablespoons. So pick up that lid, no joke. I literally measured it and did a video, posted it on YouTube today, because I really want to know. The lid is actually two tablespoons. Pour it in, that's it. And if you want, take a knife, whatever, because I'm just gonna be washing this anyways. And we're just gonna stir it, get that those flavors going. And that is your salsa. If you want, grab a lime, squeeze it in there. It's a-okay -okay if you don't. And this is really good after like the next day as well, because it really, really reconstitutes all the onions and all the other flavors. It really, it's just like all of our dip mixes too. When you let it sit even longer, leftovers are even 10 times as more amazing. So it's so flavorful to begin with. And you're like, this couldn't get any better? Wait the next day. So that's super cool where that's actually all you have to do to make our salsa. If you want, grab the lime, that's okay. Oh, that wasn't our bowl. I know why, because that was our bowl. We're gonna do the bean salad in it. So there we go. We've got those sweet potatoes yelling at me. We've got six minutes left on the clock for, oh, that six, seven minutes. You see that steam? Crazy. So I'm gonna do is we're gonna shake that, okay? Shake that. Just check your, uh, they still put some bounce. I would highly suggest doing, I don't know if yours are, I have a feeling everybody else's is fine because I just seem to have the defunct kitchen, but this'll just take a little bit longer. So you're just gonna pour those right onto your pan. If you don't have the cooling rack, that's a-okay, okay? You're gonna see all those. I'm gonna put some, you're gonna want some space. Woo, those are hot tamales. Well, not tamales, but you know what I'm talking about. Those are a little thick, Sandra. Little thick, little thick. Okay, we're gonna spin those around and I just like having kind of like, you know, some space in between my food because then you're gonna have a little bit more. Don't worry if you didn't. So you're just gonna take that oil, okay? And you're gonna brush them if you can or just pour it on top, spray it down, however you use, because we're just gonna make that oil and we're gonna let it stick as well, okay? So I'm gonna pour a little bit of that oil in. Is everybody doing okay? Hopefully, just, we're gonna paint those sweet potatoes. If you want, pour it over. Just don't pour tons of oil because you're gonna have that on that bottom if you're using cooling racks. Um, let's make sure that they're heat safe. If not, just throw them on a cookie sheet, that's it. I just have all these extra tools that make things easier, quicker, and less dishes, because I really don't like dishes. I really don't like dishes. So, good to see everybody tonight. The weather has been crazy. I feel like we're in Kansas. You know what I'm talking about. Doo -doo. And we're gonna paint these. I kind of always like calling it painting. It feels like more like a little crafty craft. And then what you're gonna do, uh, we're gonna throw that lid there. You can actually take the just fajita, sprinkle it on top, but if you wanna really go crazy, you just take one tablespoon and you can actually sprinkle it. So that way it's gonna end up, okay, on and underneath. But if you're just doing it on a pan, like sometimes the majority of the time I do, cause I'm even, you know, less dishes, then great. So you can do that. And the best part is if you do this just on a pan, you can toss, you can toss them on the pan, just like we did the sheet pan, okay? So super cool, just sprinkle some on. If you wanna measure it, you go right ahead. I just sprinkle it right on. And then I actually just try to use that oil and kind of paint it on to make sure there's no big chunks. And then it kind of actually transfers onto everything and almost like ends up like a paint. So super awesome. Okay, and you just paint away. And technically we kind of pretty much did the same thing as a sheet pan. But you now see different foods, you're gonna get a different flavor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop that into the oven, just like that. Ooh, I can hear that sizzling skillet. I don't know if you guys can, so we're gonna pop, pop that in and I'm gonna set another timer. Hey Google, set a timer for 18 minutes. Second timer for 18 minutes, okay. starting now. So I'm just gonna put that here and put that in the fridge. Maybe we'll just put that over like that. Hopefully you guys are good. Let's see how you guys are doing because I know it's been a 
quick, quick, quick night of going, holy, we've been doing a lot of cooking. So if you just did the sheet pan, but this is gonna give you an idea of all things you can do with fajita. Obviously, I usually don't serve the fajita um, fries, the sweet potato fries with the sheet pan. If you do, great, that's fine. I usually just do chicken, like I usually do the Southern baked coated um, kind of chicken bites for the kids, and then I do the sweet potato fries. So that's the kind of idea of what I do with meals, but the sheet pan is a, a meal in itself, which is super awesome. And the more chicken and the more veggies you use, it might take a little bit longer, but it's all in one shot. Throw it all in and set it and forget it. Or if you want, disperse it over two large cookie sheets and you are good to go. It's all you need. Fajita, some oil. This is one of my number one, number one spices. So just give me a second because I noticed the cat pulled the battery. No wonder. So you mentioned the Chipotle mix. Yes, okay, so Chipotle mix comes in a container like this. So it looks like, let's see if I can pull it out because I have a moment. Okay, so I can't see it, but it's just like the, the roasted garlic. So there's all these aiolis that they come in. So the chipotle is really awesome. So if you like the chipotle mayo, all it is is you grab the chipotle, you mix it in with mayo, and now you have your own chipotle mayo sweet, dip, like the dip mix. If you go to A&W, they have it there. If you go to restaurants, they always have it there. So you can actually just take the Chipotle, mix it in mayo, and that's literally all you need to do to make Chipotle mayo. And as well, roasted garlic, same thing. You can make it an aioli just with the roasted garlic. Funny thing is, roasted garlic, I actually just use, it's actually roasted garlic. That's all that's in it, but it tastes like garlic salt. I think it's because of the roasting. They roast the garlics then. Um, grind them up or like dry them out. So it really has this really garlic salt taste with no salt. So I just put this with toast or like bread or baguettes, some butter, cause everything's better with butter. Um, or you can do olive oil and you do this and you've got a garlic bread. But this garlic aioli or chipotle aioli, you just take the, the um, jar, you sprinkle it into the mayo and you change your flavor obviously of how much. There is always a recipe on the back. So it's one tablespoon with one cup of mayo and a splash of lemon juice, optional if you wanna do it. So that's all you need to do for the sweet potatoes. This, or um, if you like the chipotle, a little bit of kika heat and warm. Chipotle is awesome. And I use chipotle, actually the aioli in my chili as well. It gives that smoky, awesome flavor that literally kicks up the chili, like your chilies, like, you know, the pot of chili a lot. So I really highly recommend the chipotle. Um, when it comes to that as well. I think I might have used some of it, so, or it might be at the other end because I just did chili. So hopefully that helps. These jars are kind of the classics. A lot of people do go to the meal solutions, but I highly suggest, um, yeah, um, checking out the jars because you can actually kind of play with the flavor a little bit more, a little bit less, and then you can kind of decide what you like. Oops, sheet pans, stop. We still got that other timer going, right? So. I'm gonna pull this out. Don't do this. Okay, we still have the beans out, but don't do this. Just so you know, if, um, I'm just gonna show it to you. If you don't, if you have like a regular countertop, this is quartz, so I'm allowed to put it on top. Heat safe. So as you can see, sizzling, okay? You can always toss it, change it up, um, and flip it over at half time. But as you can see, I don't know, hopefully you guys can see, I have little pieces. So it should be ready to go. The great thing about this is that the peppers don't get super, super soggy, but they do get like a little bit skillety. So they do cook enough. So this should be ready to go because I have small pieces, but um, I would, I'm just gonna put it in for a couple more minutes. So check your chicken. If you don't know how to do that, there's a meat thermometer. So go grab a meat thermometer. Um, sometimes if you really need to cut it, once you cut a meat, when it's been cooking, if you go to cook it again, it's gonna lose all those juices, kind of like a turkey resting. So just be prepared to kind of know your chicken and, and whatever else. I'm gonna put this in for another two minutes because I always wanna be assured um, because my mom got salmonella poisoning. Not from this, from licking cookie batter dough. So I'm gonna put that in for just a couple more minutes. It's not gonna hurt it. And as you can see, it doesn't stick. I'm gonna close that up. Poor, poor sweet potatoes. But I'm gonna kick it up a notch because those sweet potatoes, don't forget, we're supposed to be at 425. So I'm going to actually just turn up the heat now because I know pretty much the chicken's done 
and I'm probably going to pull it out in a couple seconds if I remember. So let's get that bean salad going. Third and last recipe of the night. You're going to have a bowl. It's okay if it's not clear. I just do it so you guys can see stuff. Um, so all we're going to do is do the three bean salad with, of course, the fajita. Okay, so what we're going to do is drain the beans. Pretty much put it all together. Okay, so hopefully you guys got everything. Um, if you want to cheat and you don't want to get all the beans, you're going to get like just a bean medley. Okay, just get the bean medley. So that's your cheat if you want that. So you're just going to get three cans of this instead of one of each. Okay, so here we go. And by the way, I actually make my own chickpeas. So I don't make them, I don't grow them, but I take the dry ones, I soak them, I cook them, and then I freeze them because I can control the salt. Um, but you'll see that there's also other ones where you can actually get the blue menu ones. Um, there's other ones and it'll say, even the no name will say no salt added. I always go with that because then I know that I'm not having salt in there. I add it at the table, another way to control everything. So I'm gonna just grab all these ingredients and I'm just gonna show you how easy peasy it is. Cause then you can take this. And the great part is when you have the frozen corn, mine's a little bit defrosted. You're going to um, be able to, let's get that. We're gonna get our strainer out, pop it out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this over the sink, but you're just gonna drain your beans, okay? So we've got our black beans, kidney beans, okay? Chickpeas. And then we're also gonna have corn, a cup of corn or frozen corn, which helps especially in the summer, if you're making this salad, that frozen corn helps keep it cool a lot longer. And you're gonna do two green onions, but I use the other half of the onion. So what I'm gonna do is gonna pour this over the sink and you do the same. So we're gonna get those beans out and rinse those. So rinse away, people, rinse away. Rinse away, get that other bean, rinse away. Mm -hmm. Try to rinse them as best as you can, especially if you don't have the, the no salt added. If you just have the regular ones, you can get a lot of the sodium off just by rinsing. I'd say I think at least 30% you can get off, maybe 40% of the sodium just by rinsing your beans. That's right, some of it's in the water, but some of it's on the beans. So let's get that off and have heart healthy. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. So get those going, get a strainer and strain out all of that water and some of that foam, which is really the carbs that are in there. That starch, it's all healthy stuff, people, but we're gonna get that salt or whatever else that you have on there. And just get those starches because it'll make it more palatable. Shake out all that stuff, people. Okay, I'm just doing this so that I don't have to rinse it off. Okay, so really, it's just combine all the ingredients. So we're going to do those beans. Don't forget to tease. Hopefully, this is not going to go falling apart in my face. But you got the idea. You're probably going to need at least a six-cup bowl I have a four cup so you're going to see how much this makes so I'm going to kind of just get this going isn't that crazy we're going to have a huge bean salad so we're going to put that there and then here's the red part I'm like this is going to get crazy then you're going to put in a cup of the corn okay so you've got all three of the beans corn look at how crazy this is at this point I'm going to get my big mixing bowl out oh maybe you know what oh I do have a bigger one so we're gonna pour that all in. It's still not big enough, I swear it's still not big enough. But I'm gonna take this and use that oil, just get that, because it's fajita and oil, so we're good. We're good, just gonna get that like that. And then that means I can put all these in, okay? All that in, great. And if you have your cutting board still, I'm gonna get a new one. We're gonna chop up this onion, only if you want the onions. If you have green onions, great. But I'm just going to, don't forget, small one, because it's a little bit smaller, so I'm going to be good. I'm just going to do a little bit of onion, because I don't know how anybody feels about tons of big chunks of onions. If you want, go ahead, but you have two green onions. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop a little bit and get little, just kind of like go a little bit around like a clock. And you're going to just chop, 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 chop. And just get that 
You want little fine pieces for this onion, or if you're doing green onions, you're gonna do, you know, just little thin slices, okay? And you're gonna pour that in there and slide that right in. Got the onions, you've got the corn, chickpeas, black beans, kidney beans, and what else? We need, don't forget, prep bowls, awesome. Take out your orange juice, okay? Okay. Okay. Oh, hello. The peel and lift doesn't always peel and lift very well for me. So you're going to take that prep bowl. We're going to get three quarters of a cup of the orange juice, which is going to really be awesome. Instead of vinegar, orange juice. It's going to kick it up a notch. Okay. So we're going to put that in there. Do, do, do. Okay. And then we need with fajita. One tablespoon. Where are you, tablespoon? Well, can't find the measuring cup, so guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do half, half of the lid, which is one lid equals about two tablespoons. So I'm gonna try to do about half, which is gonna be one. Ooh, no chunk. There we go. I think I got about half in there, but do one tablespoon and sprinkle, please. Don't put it all in one thing, and I'm gonna shake a little bit. Put a little bit in there, and then you're supposed to put in salsa. So remember, we have salsa. Now we're going to have salsa. We're going to stir that up. I'm going to use the end of this, or maybe not. I'm just going to use that basting. Okay, we're going to put that together, and we're going to put the salsa in. So if you just have a jar of salsa, you go right ahead and use it. Don't forget, we've already made some. I find, I find, in my opinion, that that's a lot of salsa. So I'm going to save a little bit for the fajitas, and I'm gonna put the, it on top of the fajitas, the salsa mix. If you don't have it, that's A-OK. -okay. This is super good just as a fajita, and this is really good, especially after the day after. So if you want, don't forget, with the jars, you can always add more if you feel like, oh, I just want more flavor, and don't forget, add salt at the end. So of salad that you're gonna be serving to other people, feel free to add salt if you want for your taste. So just grab a spoon. Don't forget, this is vegan, no cook, so you're all good to go. Food safe, as long as you didn't cross contaminate. And then we're gonna take our Coco Picante salsa. And what I'm gonna do is literally, I'm gonna pour some of it in, okay? So I'm gonna pour some of it in, but I'm gonna save some for my fajitas. So we're gonna pour that in. So that's orange juice. You can save some of the fajitas because I like putting this on the fajitas. And don't forget, we need to take that chicken out. Where's my thing? I wanna make sure I take that chicken out. Oh, hello, sizzling. There we go. Just taking the chicken out to make sure. We still have about five minutes left in the sweet potatoes. I'm just gonna stir this again. Okay. I know I should not be using a baster, but you guys know I don't like doing dishes. So if you want, go ahead. I really should. Okay, bring out the big gun, Sandra. I'm gonna use, yeah, I was gonna use my slotted spoon, but no, you can use a ladle. Let's get down to that bottom. And then we're gonna have the corn, we have the salsa, we have the beans, and we have that orange juice that's gonna add some really kind of nice sweetness to it. But if you want, use all the salsa but I find that I like it on my fajitas. So um, what you're gonna do is if you have the guacamole, all you're gonna do is make the guacamole with some avocados for your fajita. Um, you can always put chunks of um, fajita on your, like afterwards on your fajitas, but I'm gonna show you another little hack that I have. So if you want, put all your salsa in there and now you have this beautiful, colorful bean salad. I personally, like a little bit more fajita, just telling you, but it's a, a very mild fajita. But if you want, add another tablespoon, just saying. And then with the coca picante, right? If you want, this does, if you added more, it does have a little bit of a kick. So it's that kind of blend. We've got the sweet potatoes going. We've got the chipotle aioli. You're gonna cover this and um, that's gonna be the end of that. And you're ready to go. So hopefully you guys like bean salad and you can share it, um, prepackage it. Let's just put you over here just to make sure that nothing's in there. And yeah, you have now, we're just waiting for the sweet potatoes, but you've made the three bean salad with fajita. You've made sheet pan fajitas with chicken, which is awesome. 
And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your tortillas, right? And you're gonna grab a plate and you're gonna put that sizzle on the plate um, with the guacamole. If you do wanna make guacamole or if you have guacamole, great. You do have a guacamole mix um, there, but you can take tongs, okay? Just like, or forks. And so what I'm gonna do is just show you. But yep, you're just gonna grab some, whatever's on there. Right, you wanna get some of those peppers. If you're serving other people, make sure you're giving them a little bit of everything. I'm like, oh, I got too many greens, so I actually will take one off and put yellow on to make it all super, super nice and pretty. And then what you can do, you can put your cheese on there. So here you go. You can actually put your cheese on there. I will put some of this on there. No joke, I'm gonna put some of the salsa on there. I'm gonna put some salsa. And if you have the guacamole, I know I've said this five times, I'm gonna show you just now. You're going to love this. This is my biggest hack because how many people say, hey, my, my avocados, they're either too soft, too hard, whatever. This is my hack, frozen avocados. This is what I do. I just put this in a bowl with the guacamole mix, some lime juice, I put it in the fridge, I cover it up, and about maybe an hour, two hours later, I go back and start mushing the defrosted avocados and I make it into this really, really nice guacamole. So if you want, just get the frozen avocados and save yourself a step. That's what I do, so just saying. Um, and obviously then, the guac, I haven't done it in, in ahead of time, but the guac, I like going on top. If you want, this is a good time to put cheese on as soon as it comes off. Um, that pan, and then you're just gonna wrap it and eat it, and away you go. So obviously, you have a bean salad for summers or for get-togethers or for lunches, vegan. Um, yeah, and that's the problem. So you have these avocados. So Sandy's saying about how she has these avocados and they ripen all at once, and then you're like, okay. So I kind of do this because I'm really not a good avocado kind of cuddler. <laughs> so it's either like, oh my gosh, I bought them and they're super hard, not ready in time, or they're super soft. And I'm like, really? But highly recommended if you do have avocados going like that, then what you do is you just make some guac, away you go. So, and it's kind of a thing going, if it's soft, then you're like, or just getting there, then, you know, go make your guac and go make some, <laughs> some fajita, sheet pan fajitas. So I'm like, Super awesome. There's other things you can do with guac. I have tons of ideas for guac. We should, ooh, sweet potato fries and muffy ready. Cover that up and away we go. Woo, that's a hot one. Can I get those? All right, stop. So I'm gonna do this. Hold it. Let's see. I think they still probably need a couple more minutes. Depends on my oven. It doesn't, it's always finicky. So you have your fajitas. I'm having a burnt hand. That's awesome. Ooh, hello. And it's burning the bag. <laughs> so that's what happens when you make three meals. So I'm going to just push into there. Let's see. Ooh, they are sizzling. Even these things are sizzling. So I'm going to take the biggest one. Let's just pretend, you know, I'm going to take the most perfect one. Don't forget. We didn't use any kind of animal product, so they're vegan, technically. They're soft. They're okay. But I guarantee you, you're probably going to want another five minutes, depending upon. So they're edible, but it's still got a little bit of like an al dente kind of pasta kind of idea. So I would put them in for another five minutes to crisp them up. And definitely, you're going to want to do the confection now. So they're still good, but we did thick ones. I would highly suggest putting them in for a little bit more. Putting that convection on. 425, don't forget. And away you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed the fajita cooking glass. This is one of my favorites. A great thing to do with this as well is mix it with cream cheese. Spread it. We do this for snacks all the time, my daughter and I. Okay, so you're going to actually take this. So the fajita. Mix it with cream cheese first. You're gonna spread it edge to edge, sprinkle it with cheese. Then you're gonna roll it up. Not like this, it's gonna be flat, but roll it up. 
with all that. If you want, you can put peppers in there and it's gonna be like sticking. You're gonna kind of like stick it with the cream cheese so it's thing. And then you're gonna actually put this in the fridge, save it for a couple of days if you want and prep ahead of time. But you could do it right away. I just find leaving it, the cream cheese kind of hardens again. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna slice it this way, put all these seams, so all these little pieces, you're gonna lay it on there on one of our sheets with the liner or parchment paper. And then you're gonna heat it at 450, preheat the oven, 450. You're gonna put those in, you got anahitos or we call them pinwheels, Mexican pinwheels. This fajita is to die for in that. So um, you can just do that, cream cheese, sprinkle your shredded cheese, roll it on up if you want, put a little bit of peppers and onions there, roll it up, slice it, roll it tight by the way, slice it and bake it for 10 minutes at 450 and you will have amazing appies when you wanna you know, do the Netflix or whatever else. I find that's a really simple snack that as soon as you put the oven on, and then it's just 10 minutes, you grab the parchment paper or your liner, pull it up, they peel right off, not wax paper, they peel right off and they're ooey gooey, just cheesy kind of spicy bites that are just perfect if you like cheese and you like kind of fajitas and things like that. Super awesome. So fajita is one of my favorites. That's why I picked it. <laughs> and so I hope you guys like this. Um, and don't forget, add salt after. So if you're finding you're like, mm, I'm not sure if it's tasty or not, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add salt. And then the next time, if you feel like you wanna add more flavor, just add more spice. I've kind of done it more mild this today, but you can add more, but then it can be like very, very flavorful, what you're probably missing is the salt because there is no salt in the fajita. Go check all your other name brands. Go check to see what's the ingredient list and go check to see your sodium content. I guarantee you like right here, right? Sodium is 10 milligrams. There's not salt in here, but it's very, very minimal in the fact of like, hey, by the way, it's like in there with um, a different spice. So it's basically no sodium but I guarantee you the ones that you probably were using before are. So that's the difference is that when we're constantly cutting it with salt, you're tasting that as well. So if you feel like you're missing something, use the salt and salt brings out flavors. That's my tip. So enjoy the fajita. Enjoy having a heart healthy meal. Enjoy having something very caliente and Mexican. And um, I hope you guys had a really good time tonight. I'm going to just finish up these sweet potatoes. I hope you guys are having a good time and you guys are going to have a good meal. Get some cheese, get some guac on there, whatever you want. And away you go. You guys have a really nice dinner and you have some lunch meals for tomorrow as well. Hopefully you guys share. But um, other than that, thank you so much. Um, I hope you guys have a great night and I appreciate you guys cooking along with me. <laughs> thank you. Let's stop the recording.